Hello students, I am Vidhu Vijayan, I teach biotechnology in Dune Public School, Delhi. In the last episode, we had discussed about centrifuge, the principle involved in centrifugation and we also had discussed about rate of sedimentation. Now let's discuss the types of centrifugal separations. There are two types of centrifugal separations, the first one differential centrifugation, second one density gradient centrifugation. Now let's discuss the differential centrifugation. Let me discuss the process involved in differential centrifugation. Let's look into this diagram where you can see that inside the centrifuge tube you have green colored particle, you have yellow colored particle and you have red colored particle. Which one do you find it big? Yes, the green color and followed by the yellow colored one and the smallest one is the red colored particle. When this cell homogenate is subjected to centrifugation at a particular RPM, what happens is the green colored which is heavier or denser will settle down and that forms the pellet. Now we go for the second mode of centrifugation where you take the supernatant where you can see the red colored particle and the yellow colored particle. Now this is subjected to centrifugation at a slightly higher RCF and RPM. Now you can see slowly the comparatively bigger sized molecule that is the yellow colored particle gets settled down and that forms the pellet. Now again that pellet is decanted and supernatant is taken and it is again subjected to a slightly higher centrifugation. And this process is known as differential centrifugation where the cell homogenate is subjected to repeated centrifugation by slowly increasing the RPM and RCF. Example for differential centrifugation is cell fractionation. Now let us look into this diagram. The homogenate contains various types of membranous vesicle. Now this membranous vesicle is subjected to centrifuge at 20,000 G for 20 minutes. Now what do you see in the pellet? You can see whole cells, nuclei, mitochondria and peroxisomes. Now the supernatant, the green colored portion is again taken and it is centrifuged at a slightly higher RCF of around 50,000 G for 2 hours and you can see that the microsomes get settle down as pellet. So this is exactly what happens during differential centrifugation. So during differential centrifugation the cell homogenate is subjected to centrifugation at a slowly and steadily you are trying to increase the RPF and RCF. Now let us discuss the second type of centrifugal separation that is density gradient centrifugation. In density gradient centrifugation a density gradient media is placed inside the centrifuge tube. Example for density gradient media is sucrose or cesium chloride. That is different concentration of sucrose solution is made and heaviest density layer is placed at the bottom of the centrifuge tube and the lightest density layer is seen at the top. Now inside the centrifuge tube you are going to put your sample. The density gradient centrifugations are of two types. One is rate zonal centrifugation, second one is isopycnic centrifugation. Now let's discuss rate zonal centrifugation or otherwise known as velocity gradient centrifugation. In rate zonal centrifugation what happens is as you all know that it's a type of density gradient centrifugation so already a density gradient media will be placed inside the uh, centrifuge tube. Now what we do is the solution to be separated is kept on the top of the tube and this is subjected to centrifugation. Now the separation happens only on the basis of mass or the size of the particle instead of density. Here you can see you have the layer of mixture which is nothing but your sample and the line which shows the gradient of sucrose concentration that is nothing but the density gradient media. And when this 
sample is subjected to centrifugation, you can see that the sample gets separated into different bands according to the size or the mass of the particle. Now coming to the second type of density gradient centrifugation that is isopyctic centrifugation. Isopyctic centrifugation is otherwise known as equilibrium density gradient centrifugation. Here this is completely based on Bowen density. If I try to compare with the rate zonal centrifugation, it was dependent on the size or the mass of the particle. Whereas in isopyctic centrifugation, it completely depends on the density. Here in the density gradient centrifugation, as you all know that there will be a density gradient media already present inside the uh, centrifuge tube. Now the sample is loaded in a different manner. In rate zonal centrifugation, you have seen that the sample is placed at the top of the centrifuge tube, whereas here the sample is mixed along with the density gradient media. Now you might be surprised to know how then the separation happens. Here each of the particle will try to sink because density of the particle is higher than that of the density of the immediate surrounding media. So, it starts sinking inside, but the moment the density of the particle becomes equal to the density of the gradient media, then that point is known as the isopyknic point, it stops moving. That is how it forms a separate band. I repeat, in isopyknic centrifugation, it is otherwise also known as equilibrium density gradient centrifugation, why? Because the particle get separated when the density of its become equal to the density of the gradient media and that particular point is known as isopyknic point. Now let us discuss the types of centrifuge. We have low speed centrifuge, micro centrifuge, high speed centrifuge and ultra centrifuge. I will be discussing in detail separately all the different types of centrifuge. The type of centrifuge depends on the maximum speed of sedimentation. When I say maximum speed, it is the revolutions per minute. It also depends on the presence or the absence of vacuum. Temperature control, that is for example, there are certain samples which should be done only at 4 degrees, otherwise it gets denatured. Suppose when you work with DNA or with proteins, you have to be very particular about the temperature, that is you require refrigeration or it depends on the volume of the sample and the capacity of centrifugation tubes. For example, you might be having very little sample of around 1.5 microliters or you might be having around 100 ml. So it depends upon the volume of the sample also. Coming to the first type of centrifuge that is the small bench top centrifuge which is otherwise known as low speed centrifuge. It looks something like your grinder or a mixie which is very small. It can be with or without refrigerator. It runs at a very slow speed up to 4000 rpm and mostly it is used in the clinics where you know you have to separate blood plasma or serum. It can take approximately 100 tubes depending on the diameter. The second type of the centrifuge that is the micro centrifuge. As the name itself indicates, suppose if you have samples in very minute quantities in microliters, then we go for this centrifuge called micro centrifuge. Most commonly it is used in the biochemical and biotechnology labs and it can have a RCF up to 15,000 G. It can be with or without refrigeration. The third type of centrifuge is high speed centrifuge which has got RPM of around 15,000 to 20,000 and it is normally refrigerated and it is used for the research applications and it is also used for the separation of mitochondria, protein precipitates, microsomes and other bulky protein aggregates. The last type of centrifuge is ultra centrifuge. Ultra centrifuge was discovered by Theodor Swedberg and it runs at a very high RPM of around 65,000 and it has got limited lifetime and another important property is it is very expensive and it requires special rotor and since its capacity is very high and it runs at very high speed so excess heat is also generated because of the same reason the cooling arrangement is also required. Now let us discuss the uses of centrifuge. 
Centrifuge is used in the medical laboratories. You know what exactly happens in medical lab where the separation of blood plasma and serum has to be done. This is done with the help of centrifuge. It is also applied in pharmaceutical companies for the analysis of chemicals. It is also used in the cosmetic industry for the extraction of botanicals. It is also used for the urine analysis. In the urine, you have lot of disease causing organisms which can be easily detected when it undergoes centrifuge. It is also used in the blood banks and it is also used by the geologists and the mineral analyzers. So, Today, we have discussed in length about centrifuge, different types of centrifugal separations and also we discussed about the different types of centrifuge. So, before we catch up with the next class or the next episode, there are few brainstorming questions for you all to think. First question, what are the variables that influence the settling of a particle in a centrifuge? Second, what does the name ultra centrifuge imply? Third, suppose you wanted to separate molecules or particles using an ultra centrifugation procedure. What variables could you alter that would allow you to complete the separation? Fourth question, how could you use the speed of centrifuge or time that the sample has been allowed to spin to perform a separation of several different components of the mixture? Fifth, can you think of a procedure based on solvent density that could be used to separate several different components of a mixture in an ultra centrifuge. Last question, can you think of a procedure for generating a density gradient in a centrifuge tube? Now dear students, you have got enough questions to think till I come back in the next episode. So in the next episode, we will be dealing with the gel permeation or gel filtration chromatography. Thank you. Thank you.